Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, my name's Associate Professor Karen Livesay and I'm the Program Manager for the Bachelor of Nursing here at RMIT. Today I'm going to tell you a bit about the Bachelor of Nursing program and my colleague Rosie Russell is going to talk to you about the Diploma of Nursing program. Now these programs are accredited, world-renowned programs that will give you all of the skills and attributes you need to be able to work as a registered nurse in Australia or as a diploma enrolled nurse in Australia. During the presentation, you'll see that there's a chat stream operating on the right hand side of your screen and there's moderators in that in that chat area who will be able to answer your questions. You won't be able to speak to be able to ask questions, so type them into that chat section and people will be there to answer you. Um, and we'll try and answer any questions that come up uh, along the way, but we'll also have an opportunity to answer questions at the end of the session. So um, feel free if there's something you want me to talk about more to pop that into the chat section. Next slide, please. OK, I'm going to start off with um, our acknowledgement of country that RMIT regards as an important um, action that we take at the start of all of our meetings. So RMIT University acknowledges the people of the Woi Wurrung and Boon Wurrung language groups of the Eastern Kulin Nation on whose unceded lands we conduct the business of the university. RMIT University respectfully acknowledges their ancestors and elders, past, present and emerging, and RMIT also acknowledges the traditional custodians and their ancestors of the lands and waters across Australia where we conduct our business and where each of us is joining this meeting from today. Next slide, please. Now, I did sort of mention that we regard it as imp really important to um, start all of our meetings with an acknowledgement, but we also have a significant commitment to reconciliation. So RMIT is working to define its relationship in working and supporting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's self-determination. The university's goal is to achieve lasting transformation by maturing its values, culture, policy and structures in a way that embeds reconciliation in everything we do. This is, we mean this, this is really um, a serious thing for us at RMIT. In line with those principles uh, of Bundil, we're changing our ways of knowing, working and being to support sustainable reconciliation and activate a relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous staff, students and community. Next slide, please. So as I said, we've got two presentations that are going to take place today. I'm going to speak in the first instance about the Bachelor of Nursing. So there's two ways you can study nursing and, and they work together. And when we talk about the Diploma of Nursing in the second half of this presentation, my colleague Rosie does that, uh, you'll be able to see the way you can move from one program to the other. So a Bachelor of Nursing leads to registration as a registered nurse. A Diploma of Nursing leads to registration as an enrolled nurse. Next slide, please. So we're going to spend some time obviously now talking about the Bachelor of Nursing program. Uh, next slide. So the Bachelor of Nursing program um, is a three year degree program that prepares you to work as a registered nurse anywhere in Australia. Um, in order to do that, there's a number of features that the program has. So in our program, across the three years of the program, there's clinical practice or experience in nursing, delivering nursing care in all of the places that nursing happens. I won't just say in the hospitals, but often it is in hospitals in every year of the program. And that's across metropolitan as well as rural areas. How do we get you ready to be able to go out into a hospital and work with real patients? Well, we do that in what we call our clinical laboratories. Now, I know laboratory makes it sound like a scientific kind of area. It's not that at all. Our laboratories are state-of-the-art facilities, and we'll show you some photos of those in a moment, um, which uh, resemble clinical environments. They look exactly like a hospital, and you practice in those laboratories and uh, refine your skills before you go out into practice with real people. But you also get an opportunity to work in mental health uh, nursing environments and study mental health nursing. You will undertake a core Indigenous health course 
as well as um, undertake all, a whole range of other professional development support that prepares you to work as a graduate nurse in our industry. Next slide, please. So what do you need to get into the Bachelor of Nursing? Well, um, for those people who are coming from secondary school, uh, they're clearly in ATAR is 65 or was last year. Uh, so that, that gives you a ballpark of about where you need to be aiming to be. In terms of subject selection, uh, units one and two and a satisfactory completion of any maths uh, or unit three and four of any maths. Units three and four with a study score of at least 30 in English or at least 25 in um, any of the other English language courses. Uh, for non um, year 12 students, you may have to undertake a, an additional um, test in order to be considered. Um, we have an English language requirement for this program and I have to mention this English language requirement. It comes from our governing body, the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Australia, and they require all of the entrants into our programs to meet a certain English language requirement. Now, I would suggest to you that the best way you can understand that English language requirement it's in its completion is to go to the NMBA website. Uh, but briefly speaking, you need to sign a declaration demonstrating that you've been um, educated in uh, English language in, a, a, in either Australia or in a range of other countries that are nominated. Or if you can't meet that requirement, then you need to undertake an English language assessment test and score at least a score of seven in the IELTS test um, across all four bands. So just be un understanding that you need to meet all of those requirements in order to be able to apply for this program. Next slide, please. So I mentioned earlier, right at the start of this presentation, that there's two pathways into our program. So you can come in from uh, work or school and join the Bachelor of Nursing and undertake this program as a three year course. So uh, three years start to finish and you're done and you're eligible to register as a registered nurse. Or if you'd prefer, you can come in through the, batch, uh, the Diploma of Nursing program, undertake the Diploma of Nursing and then apply for the Bachelor of Nursing. So if you come into the Bachelor of Nursing having completed the Diploma of Nursing, then you would be able to complete our program in between two and two and a half years. Now that sounds a little non-specific, I know. Two years if you join our program at the beginning of any calendar year in February. If you join in mid-year, because of the sequence of our courses, there's a chance that it will take you two and a half years to complete. Um, but um, uh, that's all we have to worry about is that one additional course if you join in mid-year. Okay, um, next slide please. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about our course structure. Our course has nursing subjects in every single semester. We understand that when you come into a program like this and you want to experience what it's like to be a nurse and to understand that, that part of what you need to be able to do is have subjects that help you to learn about nursing. So you'll see that there's largely speaking, um, a group of nursing subjects that run down the page in the first column. So introduction to nursing studies, where we're talking about what it is to be a nurse, principles and practice of nursing, which helps you to understand some of the basic skills and assessments that you'll do as a nurse. And then they start to be supported by additional subjects. You need to understand how the human body works. So your bioscience subjects, your physiology subjects, therapeutic subjects because you'll be administering medications. And then the program builds down the page and in every single semester after the first semester, there's a professional experience practice subject. And that's when you go out into practice environments like hospitals and have an opportunity to work and experience nursing and be assessed working through patient care with genuine patients. Um, right at the end of the program, you'll see that there's an opportunity to do an elective subject. And that's the, the time where lots of our students make choices about 
wanting to do some additional work in mental health, wanting to do some additional work in paediatrics, wanting to do some additional work in an area like palliative care. So that's how the elective subjects work in our program. But importantly, clinical practice in every single semester, because as you learn new content and new theory, you need to have the opportunity to put that into practice and to be able to, um, I think the word I'm looking for is apply the knowledge that you're gaining in a real situation. Next slide, please. So we find that it's really important that when we're delivering our program, we have really strong connections with our industry. So the industry of nursing care and at, which sits within healthcare more broadly. And so we have a lot of opportunities for a connection between the Bachelor of Nursing program and industry. Clinical placements is one of the biggest connections and we have them in a whole variety of different healthcare agencies across the program. Now you may look at other programs and we understand you'll be assessing your where you want to be and what works best for you and you may come across programs that offer all of their clinical placements in the same hospital. RMIT have made a deliberate um, decision and strategy that we want students to experience the breadth of clinical practice and not be uh, segmented into only understanding the way things are done in one hospital and we think that's important in terms of the way we prepare you to be a registered nurse eventually and practice independently. So there are subtle differences between the way one of the large hospital networks in the city operates and the way another one does. There's definitely differences between the private sector and the public sector. There's also definitely differences between how you would work in a a metropolitan hospital as opposed to a regional hospital because the services are different and the way they work with their resources is different and we want you to have that range of experiences. So we have connections with a whole range of different healthcare agencies in order to give students that breadth of experience. We also have um, staff from those hospitals and healthcare organisations. They work with us in terms of our curriculum what we teach you, making sure that what we're teaching you, you is exactly equivalent to what they're currently doing in practice because we think that it's important that we have mechanisms that keep us at that cutting edge. Um, but they also come in and teach you in our clinical laboratories, in those, in that simulated environment that I mentioned before that looks just like a real hospital. So when you're in, taught in there, you're going to be being taught by nurses who uh, are the same nurses who will be supervising you when you're out in clinical practice. Um, and we also have um, opportunities for students to apply for a range of different scholarships, which we think is important in terms of um, your connection to nursing as an industry and, and our discipline. Next slide, please. So I've spoken a little bit about um, when we talk about clinical practice that it doesn't just happen in hospitals. And so if you're thinking about nursing as a career and who wouldn't be at the moment, um, we can see that nursing is a stable opportunity. We are certainly, um, there's lots and lots of employment opportunities for nursing and we expect that they're going to grow into the future. But we want you to think about it as more than just working at the bedside in a public hospital. So that is absolutely a core part of nursing work. But there's also extended care opportunities, community care opportunities, working in public health. And again, look around you today and you can see the impact of public health. Um, you can work in schools if that's your bent and you're interested in working in that sort of environment. But we have nurses in industry, um, in maternal and child health settings, in remote areas, working um, as independent practitioners or with medical staff, so um, organisations like the Royal Flying Doctor Service. Uh, nurses work in tourism and tourism will come back again. We all know it will. Um, in the defence forces, um, like I said, in specialist settings like mental health, as well as nurses who work as independent practitioners, like as nurse practitioners, and, and perform care in the home as well. So don't think of nursing as an environment where everyone works every single day in a hospital, in a ward. Next slide, please. 
So uh, there's a little video here that I'm just going to introduce to you. Uh, this is one of our current students and she's just going to talk for a couple of minutes about her experience of nursing. Can you play the video please? My name's Nara. I'm studying my Bachelor of Nursing. I'm in my third year, which is the final year. Nursing is just so broad that there's just so many different angles and qualities that make up a good nurse. I think you need to be a good communicator. Uh, you need to be empathetic. You need to know how to work as a team. You also need to know how to work individually. You need to be able to manage your time well. The nursing simulation labs at RMIT have been really helpful because they're, they're really modern. Um, they have some really great equipment and all the pumps and equipment that would be used in a real ward situation. Uh, and we get to go through with the mannequins who are also simulated. So they breathe and they can talk and they can throw a curveball at you. Um, and you have to be really quick and, and able to respond to their needs. So this year we're doing a module on um, preparing us for the workplace next year, which is becoming quite daunting um, and reality, a bit of a reality check. And we're also doing um, practical placements, um, which we do throughout the whole three years. Um, but this year, obviously, they're becoming more complex and more um, focused on getting us prepared for going out into the workforce next year. Thanks. So I just want to point out to you that that video was filmed um, late in 2020 whilst we were working in COVID conditions and that's why our students are all wearing masks for part of their practice. Um, and we've been really, really fortunate that our students have continued in that simulated practice during COVID conditions um, because the government allows certain um, uh, professions to continue to practice. Um, because we're educating you to be able to deal with working in COVID conditions. And so with the utmost safety of the students in mind, we do so with um, very strict COVID safety plans in place, but we continue with our on-campus requirements and students continue in their clinical practice in hospitals. But again, with restrictions in terms of what patients they're able to be exposed to. And that's just around keeping our student population safe. Now, I finished talking about the Bachelor of Nursing now, so I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Rosie, and Rosie's now going to talk to you about the Diploma of Nursing. Lovely. Lovely, thank you, Karen, so much. Thank you, Karen, so much for that um, great introduction um, to the Bachelor of Nursing. And I'm now going to um, uh, introduce you to the Diploma of Nursing here at RMIT University. Next slide, please. Thank you. So the Diploma of Nursing, you might be wondering really what that entails, but as a student, um, it, it's a two year program and it means that you will be working in collaboration with the registered nurse, which is the qualification that a student um, receives if they've uh, finished their higher ed um, qual. But with the Diploma of nurse, um, Nursing, you will um, look after a whole range of um, people in different environments um, and different age groups. And there's a lot of focus on the aged care, mental health community and acute health care sectors um, with our clinical placements. There's some of the ranges of the different courses that you will um, cover during your studies. And similarly, we build on the foundational subjects first, basic anatomy and physiology. And then as we advance through the program, we build onto that knowledge with more complex care, such as things like medication administration, complex and acute care. And within the Diploma of Nursing, it there is a total of 10 weeks of clinical placement, a minimum of 400 clinical hours. Next slide, please, Hugh. So within the Diploma of Nursing, you will develop the skills that's required for healthcare where there's a rapidly changing demands, as we've seen in the last 18 months. And you'll learn um, to develop critical thinking skills and analytic skills to help you to make 
assessments of patients and determine what care that you need to give. You'll also be introduced to medication and intravenous administration. And this is a year long subject that is starts off gently and then it builds with more intensity as the program or the course um, continues. Throughout the program as well, you will learn about nursing care plans and how to evaluate that care. And this is where the analytical and critical skills um, really help you to be able to um, do that. We also have, um, like I said, um, aged care placements scattered across the program, the two year program, um, where, nurse, where the students will go out into the community, mental health, aged care and medical surgical skills get to be applied in those settings. And one of the very early courses that you learn is about cultural diversity. And that's really important because as we know, in Australia, we're a very culturally diverse nation and you will also have a very broad cultural diversity uh, range of people that are requiring health care and also your colleagues that you'll be working with. Next slide, please, Hugh. So the entry requirements to, into the Diploma of Nursing is that you must have successfully completed an Australian Year 12 or an equivalent qualification. And similarly, like the Bachelor, you also need to have your English language requirements, which is stipulated by our um, governing body, our nursing body. You need to be at least 18 years of age to come into the program. And you also need to have some additional checks, a national police check, a working with children's check, and the relevant vaccinations. And there's a new vaccination that's just appeared there too, which is our COVID-19 vaccinations. Next slide, please. So entry into the program is, there's two pathways. Um, so you can come in via completing a tertiary preparation, uh, which is offered at RMIT, and that's a tertiary, uh, sorry, a certificate for in tertiary preparation. It's a six month program, but it helps to really build um, confidence and revisit some of those um, skills, English language, numeracy, and a bit of a science focus to assist you to come into the Diploma of Nursing. So if you use that as a pathway, the total uh, duration of your program would be 2.5 years, two and a half years. There's also a second option as well available through RMIT, and that's pathway B through the Allied Health Program. And again, that's another certificate for in the Allied Health. Um, sorry, yes, and that's a one year duration. And with that qualification, you do go out on a clinical placement for the Allied Health Certificate 4, which is a great tester because then you come into the Diploma of Nursing for two years, where obviously you're going to be doing further um, clinical placements. And that would take a total of three years. Next slide, please, Hugh. So as I said, the program structure in the first year, we uh, deliver the fundamentals of nursing so that you have a really strong foundation. And then as you advance into second year, we can build on that knowledge. So what we deliver, um, the way the program structured in the first year is you would look at subjects like confirmed physical health, which covers basic anatomy and physiology. You would also learn how to manage challenging behaviours that you may encounter. So just different ways that um, you would be able to manage that situation, how to work in a team. Also fundamentally infection control, again, very popular in the last 18 months. Um, legal and ethical parameters of nursing, of course, um, there's a duty of care and you have to have a solid understanding of the legal and ethical um, framework that governs our profession. Learn how to implement nursing care plans and also evaluate the care provided. During the first year, you will also do up to five to six weeks of clinical placement. And typically the first placement is usually around week 14 um, that you head out onto your first clinical placement. So nice and early gives you a really good taste to know this is definitely the study that I would like to um, continue with. And then in year two, 
you will learn to develop those patient assessment skills, develop the analytical skills that you need to be able to care for people as the acuity and the complexity of your clinical placement um, uh, allocations require. You'll also, as I said earlier, you'd be introduced to the medication and intravenous administration course. And during this second year, you will also undertake uh, two more placements, um, and that would be a total of four, sometimes up to five weeks of clinical placement in a, um, an acute setting. Thanks, Hugh. Next slide. Thank you. So you can commence in semester one or semester two of our academic year. So typically semester one begins in February of each year and semester two would be our mid-year intake, which starts in early July. As I've said previously, the program's two years full time and we have uh, campuses, we, have, we offer the program in the city or the Bundura campus. Um, we have a blended learning approach almost a hybrid approach. And I guess that's been in response to the current, um, you know, 18 months um, since COVID. Um, so the classes are delivered face-to-face, -face, both in an online forum, such as we're doing now, and through independent study. And we also have our practice-based nursing labs on campus where you actually interact face-to-face -face with um, your educators. And that's um, in a supervised um, environment. And we also have um, obviously the clinical experience that you would go out on. And before you get allocated to a clinical placement, you need to have met all the requirements both in theory and in practice, and of course, all your immunisation status before you're able to be allocated a clinical placement. Next slide, please. So like the bachelor, the work integrated learning is a really key part of the program. And this is where you really get to engage with industry um, and engage putting theory into practice. So, as I've said previously, the clinical placements are spread across the program. And the majority of our placements are all across Victoria. So we do have a lot of metropolitan placements, but we also rely and have a lot of our placements out in a rural setting across Victoria. And this is important because the students who do go out onto a regional placement, the benefits that they reap in that environment is huge and often they have such a fantastic experience that the next placement they request to go to a rural setting again. Um, but this is a little bit of an overview here. So you go out around about week 14 of the beginning of the program uh, to aged care and then you go into a rehabilitative setting in the next phase of the first year in that last six months. And then in um, the second year, you attend a mental health placement, a community placement, and an acute care placement is your final one. Next slide, please, Hugh. So the facilities in our nursing labs, as Karen explained prior, are quite modern, state-of-the-art. Um, and it's a great place for you to come and experiment and safely have a go at putting the theory that you've been learning into practice in a safe, supported environment. Um, the wards are set up like a typical ward um, that you would experience in a hospital. Um, we've got the bells and whistles. Um, we can really, really simulate what it's like to be in the real world. And this is a really good opportunity here where you get to engage with your peers and also your, ed, um, your academics, your educators. And typically you would have one ward, sorry, one um, practice-based lab day timetabled once per week. So nice, regular, frequent um, time spent in this learning environment. Next slide, please, Hugh. Good. So that's the end of my part of the presentation. So I'd just like to thank everybody for listening. I think we've got 29 attendees um, that's been with myself and Karen, and it's now question time. 
Thanks heaps for that, Rosie. That was fabulous. Um, you know, Rosie and I are both passionate about nursing. So what we need you to understand is we think that it's a terrific job. Uh, we think it's the best job that there is for anyone to do. So we hope you hear some of our enthusiasm. Now I'm just going to pick up on a couple of the questions that have uh, come up during um, the discussion so far and go back and, and perhaps provide a little bit of extra information around those. Mm -hmm. So the types of roles available for first year graduates. Well, I'll talk about the bachelor's program. So when you graduate as a registered nurse, there's two real ways that nurses start working after their program. They enter into what's called a graduate nurse program and they're usually offered by hospitals, by industry. And that's a supportive program that generally goes for about 12 months. And it depends on which hospital you go to as to what sort of experiences that they might include. But but hospitals try and build their grad programs around a way that enables students to explore where they want to work. So there's usually some medical. Um, so that might be dealing, I'll give you an example, with patients with unstable diabetes or patients who've had a heart attack, or there might be some surgical experience. So that would be working with people, for example, who have had their appendix out or maybe their gallbladder removed. Um, or it might be in a specialty area and you'd all be familiar with areas we're seeing in the media at the moment like intensive care and the emergency department and so graduate programs for first year registered nurses would include work experience in all those sorts of environments but if you applied to a mental health facility, then you might do all of your graduate nurse program in mental health placements. And therefore it might be in a eating disorder unit. It might be in a drug and alcohol unit. It might be working with um, uh, elderly people with uh, mental health conditions. So it depends on where you apply as to the range of experiences you might have as a registered nurse. You can just go and get a job as well if you want to. It's just that most students prefer this idea of having a bit of a uh, extended experience so that they firm up their ideas of what they think they want to do in the longer term. A bit of a tour, if you like. Uh, Rosie, do you want to talk about um, grad experiences for your students, for diploma students? Yes, thank you, Karen. Lovely. Yes, um, we've got many of our um, industry providers as well, um, often Cyclic, like cyclically, like they're just doing it at the moment, um, offering graduate uh, grad programs for the enrolled nurse as well. So just recently, um, I'm just thinking, Western Health, um, Eastern Health, or Eastern Healthcare um, are just a couple that have just sprung into my mind. So the grad programs are often, um, yeah, another way to, I guess, feel supported. Um, enhance what you've learned and um, have that, I guess, a stepping stone between finishing your program with us, your studies, and then before you actually, you know, you join the workforce. So it's an opportunity to, um, I guess, support you um, as you move across into your new profession. Another question that um, has been put forward in the chat is around locations where you would do placement. And as I said, we've made a deliberate strategy decision at RMIT to provide a breadth of those kinds of experiences. We do try to regionally match students where their home address is to an area. So if you lived in the Outer East, we would be trying to match you to hospitals in the Outer East for your um, clinical experience. We have to say that uh, we can't guarantee that because there's um, there's a whole range of different reasons why and without being too complex about it, let's just say a hospital in the Outer East has given us um, second year placements, but you're ready to do a third year placement. And our third year placements are located in the Metro hospitals right in the centre of town. Then we won't be able to give you another placement in the Outer East. And that's why we make it clear to students that there may be some travel involved in them attending clinical placements. And we have some guidelines around that in terms of the um, how far we would expect students to travel to a placement. 
not everyone gets a regional or a rural placement um, and students are able to indicate to us if they've got a preference or a reason that they can't do that. Um, you know, I was talking to a student the other day who has a young family and she just can't do that. She's a single parent, so that's OK. We have a process in place to make that clear and that student doesn't get allocated to that sort of placement. But we've had lots of our students go up and do placements in some of the larger regional centres. Uh, often the hospitals help with accommodation and the students have incredibly good experiences. Um, often they're quite sort of, uh, I'm a bit worried about going all the way there and they come back and say, best thing I've ever done. Um, so sometimes it's a little bit about getting over that um, trepidation, I suppose. But um, so there's some flexibility in there, but we also have an expectation that you understand that we're going to send you where is the best place for you to get that experience and the place that will provide the numbers of students that we have to place. Uh, and so there's going to be flexibility on both sides. Did you want to add anything to that, Rosie, for your students? Thanks, Karen. Um, yes, so in the diploma, we the expectation is that all students will actually attend at least one rural placement um, because we believe that the opportunity um, just enhances and really enriches and, um, you know, some of the exposure that you have in a rural setting um, can be quite um, vast and um, we just find that it's a really, really good learning environment. Again, the placement team work very, very hard to try and secure, um, you know, match you with the best um, location, um, but we cannot guarantee um, that we can always meet some of your requirements and, you know, your wish list. But um, yeah, every student pretty much will always be given at least one rural placement um, out of the five that they attend. Um, it's just sort of the nature, the competitiveness of um, finding placements. And it also has helped us um, to have all our students graduate on time. Um, and like Karen said, when the students often come back from a, a rural placement, they're very keen to um, consider actually either going there after they've graduated, uh, returning back to a rural setting, or actually putting in a special request, could I also, um, you know, attend another rural placement on my next placement? We never send you to the same place twice. Um, we really strive to make sure that you get a really diverse range of um, experience. And we also look at um, any skills that may not have been captured, then we would look to make sure that the next placement that you were allocated opportunities would be there for you to capture those skills. So it is a little bit bespoke, but as Karen said, um, we do try our best, but there is definitely in the diploma an expectation that you will attend one rural placement. Thanks, Karen. Another question we have in the chat at the moment is around um, employment outlook. Now, this is just about my happiest question to answer. Because um, I want to stop for a moment and get you to think about what is happening in nursing right now in the world. We've long been reporting um, the World Health Organization as well as Australian health organizations have been reporting that we anticipate going into the future there will be a shortage of nurses. It's around things to do with the average age of the um, average nurse in Australia currently and um, and therefore when we do workload and workforce forecasting that is trying to look into the future and understand what the workforce needs are we understand that there's going to be a need for more and more nurses both locally nationally and internationally around the whole world so the world health organization is currently predicting a workforce shortage of nursing worldwide of something in the league of 13 million. That's an awful lot of jobs. And one of the things we've really seen throughout the COVID-19 pandemic is just what a difference nurses are making. So when you listen to the news and you hear them talking about availability of ICU beds, don't forget that it's not just a piece of furniture they're talking about. 
the bed is um, easily, it's easy to go and purchase more beds. In fact, the government was very good at purchasing more ventilators. What we really need is an experienced, exceptional nurse standing beside that patient. And this is what we need to think about in terms of what are the graduate opportunities. We understand that nursing's made a huge difference. We expect that nursing will continue to make a huge difference in the workforce, in the health workforce moving forward. Um, we, we need to guarantee that we meet the workforce requirements in Australia for what we anticipate to be an increased burden of care as the population gets older. Um, this is a role and a job and a responsibility where you can expect to be employed throughout your whole life. There are great opportunities and it's one of the few um, areas we can say that we expect that there will continue to be growth going forward into. And for people during the pandemic, um, there's more work than we know what to do with really and more new opportunities. Nurses leading different initiatives and different um, um, things that have been introduced. So when you go and get your COVID test, there'll be a nurse leading that centre. When you go and be immunised, there'll be nurses involved in that. There's nurses involved in all areas of healthcare. And so this is just a brilliant space and why I love answering the question so much in terms of employment going forward. Um, the outlook is very, very positive indeed. Do you want to add anything to that, Rosie? Thanks, Karen. Um, look, yeah, just stands right beside Karen there with that. Um, for the enrolled nurse as well, there is a lot of demand um, for, um, you know, in the work environment. And it's quite important as well, maybe whilst you're doing your studies, to think about some of maybe the additional things that you could get involved in as a student, like student reps, etc. Um, reason being, um, it is quite competitive out there um, to either a graduate, a graduate a grad position or um, a job. So you really want to um, stand out ahead, be ahead of everybody else. And RMIT is has a whole suite of different ways that students can get involved um, to really sort of supplement not just your um, studies, but also those work ready skills so that you stand out um, in front of um, other um, potential applicants. Um, but agree with um, Karen, lots and lots of demand. Um, 2020 was the year of the nurse and it was a bit ironic that it happened to be the year of COVID as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a fabulous, profession and um, there's just so much opportunity and diversity and just different things and you can drop in and drop out and, and you can move around. So it's very, very family friendly as well. It's it's a great profession. Thanks, Rosie, Karen. there's a couple of questions that are directed mm. specifically to your program. I'm not sure yeah. if you can see them, so I'm happy to read them to you or to the audience. Somebody's asked about an ATAR required for the Diploma of Nursing. Yes, there is. And um, thanks, Karen. Um, so the ATAR for nursing, we actually have um, a slight difference between the city and the Bandura. Um, fundamentally, that boils down to the fact that the city campus is more popular. Um, there's a lot more demand, but the ATAR for the city is um, uh, 70. Um, and for Bandura, it's about 64.5. Um, very popular program. Um, just this recent semester two applications, I think there was about 1800 um, spots and we could only take 125 out of that. So it is, like I've said, it's quite a um, very popular program um, and RMIT is a popular university slash VE college to study at. And I think I've got the next question here as you well. You do indeed. Um, yeah, go for it. Karen. So, yes, it's a great one. So the question is, is the Diploma of Nursing much harder than a Certificate 3 in health? I would say most definitely um, capitalised, underlined. Uh, reason that I say that is Certificate 3 is it's like a framework. Uh, it's a little bit like a pyramid. So the diploma is actually a level five. So a certificate three will literally be level three and then the diploma is level five. So there's actually a level four in between. Um, so to be honest, um, yes, it's a very rigorous program and 
definitely um, diploma level is quite challenging. Hopefully that answers that, um, that question. That's why we have the streams to help students to perhaps um, like the Allied Health um, Tertiary Prep, which are level a certificate four. So perhaps if you're working currently at it or you've been studying at a certificate three level, perhaps, and you're a little bit daunted, unsure, perhaps using one of the streams, the pathways, level four, it's like stepping stones or steps, um, might support you to come up to a level five. Good. Scrolling a little bit further through the questions, Rosie, there's another one that's also directed toward you, I think, but we might both answer. And it asks, mm. what's the benefits of completing a diploma as well as a bachelor? So why don't you kick that off and then I'll see if um, there's anything left for me afterward. All right, thanks, Karen. Um, I guess with the diploma, I'll sort of the experience that I've seen um, since I've been working in this area is that often students may come, they could be direct school leavers um, or they could be mature adults that perhaps have always dreamt of becoming a nurse but other things got in the way and they never quite got there to the, you know achieve that, that dream um, and then they're often a little bit unsure because they might have you know left school 15 years, 20 odd 30 years ago. Um, so they're a little bit unsure about whether stepping straight into higher ed um, would be the right setting for them. Um, the other thing that's attractive as well, I would say, is because you can have a qualification in two years time, that sometimes is attractive for, um, for adult learners um, wanting, you know, that may have busy other commitments in their life. Um, and the opportunity to get a qual in two years time and actually start to work um, is attractive. So that could be a reason for why a diploma is, people are drawn to the diploma of nursing. Um, I would say the benefits with actually starting your diploma would be confidence building. So really to assist you build your confidence. And often we do find that students who um, may have fell in that category, hadn't been to school for over 20 years, after about 12 months of the diploma, their confidence is starting to lift and then they actually start talking about transitioning on to do their bachelor. So sometimes it's pure and simple about building your self-confidence and self-belief that you can actually do this. And that, I believe, is um, what the diploma does offer for those students who are keen to go, actually, I think I can, you know, do this. Um, and they then wish to continue on with their studies to become a registered nurse um, by going on to do their bachelor. Mm, that would be my um, take on it. And it's an opportunity too to get a qualification and you can yeah. continue studying and work. I think that's where we probably come into it in the bachelor. So for those students who've completed the diploma, they're now registered practitioners and they're qualified and able to work in nursing. And so they then move into a period where they choose to study further into the bachelor's program what they're bringing is a whole world of work experience to that study. And so we see that uh, there's sort of two ways that that impacts those nurses. When they apply for a registration and uh, employment at the end of their bachelor's program, the work experience they've gained in their enrolled nurse work is hugely beneficial to them. It means that they've encountered a whole range of things that are common between both levels of nursing. They've worked across the team. They understand how the team works together. They've refined things like their nursing communication. They're very, very clear about their role and in interaction with patients. And so their confidence is, is, is beautiful because of that. So we see that. We see that for students often whilst they're studying they want to work and for students who have a diploma there's the flexibility of the way you can work in nursing. So there's many many roles that can be casual and part-time in nursing that fit really well around the requirements of study especially when students then need some time off to go on placement. Now that's not to say that if you've got a part-time job working in retail or in hospitality you can't make that 
at work, many of our students have exactly that sort of employment and they do make it work. But the flexibility of working in nursing um, is, is extraordinary in terms of continuing to work at the same time as you study. And, uh, and so we see that that works really well for those students as well. So I think it's the, what we call transferable skills. So the skills that exist for nurses working at the enrolled nurse level that are also relevant to nurses learning and working um, toward becoming registered nurses that we see is a, a really big benefit. Um, so yeah, that's it that doesn't mean you have to do it that way. Uh, it, we just see that that's one of two alternatives uh, in terms of entry into our program. Um, Rosie, I see that there's another question in the chat that's directed towards you with regard to in particular um, a personal statement and the requirement or otherwise for a personal statement in um, your program. Lovely. Thanks, Karen. Yes, um, so currently uh, what we're offering at RMIT with the Diploma of Nursing um, is we've got a, I, today I spoke about the 24 month um, delivery. Um, in 2020, we commenced a 18 month delivery with um, two cohorts of students. Um, and one was with the Epworth Fellowship Program, which continues on, I'm proud to say, um, again this semester. Um, and we also have a Work for Victoria 18-month um, program as well being delivered. Now, both groups are expected to complete their 18-month studies um, at the end of this year. The Work for Victoria was actually put together because it was in response to the COVID um, situation where a number of people were retrenched um, with their jobs and they needed to upskill and reskill. So they've um, we've put together this program and as I said, they're going to have, get their qualification um, as enrolled nurses at the end of this year. Um, with the fellowship Epworth um, partnership that we have, that 18 month program, we have um, one of the, I guess, requirements for your interest in application into that program is that you provide a personal statement. And the reason that we've asked for that is for two reasons. It is an 18 month delivery. So that does mean that there's, and it's the same volume of learning, the same volume of um, courses, 25 in total, that you need to complete, um, which does mean that being an 18 month delivery, it's a little bit more intense as in um, there's a few extra days, well, there's a, a few extra subjects per term or per semester because there's only three in total as opposed to four. Um, and the other benefit of a personal statement is because it's linked to the Epworth um, Hospital, the Ep Epworth Health themselves, um, what they're looking for is uh, participants to actually do some additional clinical hours. So there's a total, instead of it being 400 clinical hours, um, it's actually 600 clinical hours that those particular students need to engage in. Um, now that's an extra 200 hours, which is actually quite a lot of an extra volume of learning, again in an 18 month program. So the personal statement just really helps to um, support those students who are really passionate and would really like to have that opportunity to do the majority of their placements with Epworth. Um, because at the end of the day, that program really is looking for people who possibly would like to um, work for Epworth as an enrolled nurse. So by providing a personal statement, um, it just helps in the selection process that we are actually choosing, um, I guess, the right candidates to join that program um, that are committed, um, but also have a full understanding of the rigours of that program. So the extra placement hours, as well as the fact of the duration of the course is um, 18 months. So hopefully that answers that question. Good. Okay, well, um, I see that the moderators have answered most of the other questions in the chat channel in terms of um, specific requirements for individual students who are looking to enter the program. Um, 
So I would ask that anyone who has any questions with regard to um, our entry requirements, I think they're spelled out fairly broadly on the website mm. with regard to both of our programs. So um, I would direct you to go to the website to learn more about our programs. Um, I, I see that uh, we've probably only got about one or two minutes left. Uh, Rosie, is there anything else there that you would like to say or um, answer around your program before we close? Lovely, thanks Karen. Um, no, look, I just would say that um, at RMIT we offer two really good quality um, programs, the diploma and the bachelor. So if healthcare is your passion or perhaps a seed's been planted with um, with you know the current and ongoing situation, um, I just think it would be a really you know, they're both great programs, great place to study, lots of support. Um, it's all about the student experience. And um, yeah, RMIT, I, I believe that RMIT, it's a great place to work as well as a um, great place to study. And I'd just like to thank all the busy little um, bees in the background answering all those other questions. Thanks everybody for coming today. Likewise, I think the, our moderators have done a great job. I hope um, mm. participants who've been present have enjoyed the presentation. Once again, I'd um, encourage you to go to the website and have a look um, and um, follow up anything that you still have outstanding after our presentation today. Uh, we're really pleased that you're contemplating nursing as a profession in the future and we hope that you continue to be excited about that as an idea. So for more information on any of the programs, be sure to check out that program information on the website and thanks heaps for your attendance today and maybe we'll meet in the future. That'd be great. Thank you everyone. Thank you everybody. Take care.